Thank you, everybody, for attending. I'm really happy to, to have uh, each and every every one. It, it really makes a great difference. I feel uh, just as lucky as can be to have uh, this uh, scene and situation. It's great to uh, have good uh, bass player and drummer who are happy enough to uh, learn my songs and, and perform. And it's great to have an audience who will show up and listen. And it, uh, uh, and I can pick the themes. So we, we've done concerts over the years. We did a, a, an evening of music of John Coltrane. We did one of Earl Sinders. We did one of uh, Thonius Monk and a Bud Powell. They forget something, but and then there was, lately we've been doing the songs from the Sunny Saw songbook. <laughs> that uh, it's, I feel uh, happy that I, that there, that I have one and that I can hear the songs and get to think about them. There's uh, the song. It's the songs. Uh, the theme of this e evening was supposed to be inspiration, and uh, I've thought about uh, what that might. First, I, when I picked that title, I, I was looking through my song, like a table of contents in a songbook, and I noticed some of the songs are written for family members, and some are from for friends, and some for like maybe public figures or people like. So I thought that's what I called inspiration: the people that who I didn't know personally, but everything is inspiring. In fact, I thought everything, everything that uh, there shouldn't even be a word, and that ins inspiration. Like, why aren't we always inspired? And it's just, uh, we can't think uh, life is, uh, we don't know what it is. And you think of even uh, what's a cell doing and what's what's DNA and where does it begin and what is uh, where does life end and where does life start? And things like that I think about all the time. And I, and it's, it's all, that's really inspiring. And the, what's going on about, uh, I don't know, the conscious part of what we're thinking, this part that can solve an equation maybe or make the right change, uh, that's not as busy as the cell, uh, what's going on, how it's multiplying and how it's doing it. So that's, so the, I guess the big clue I, I was thinking today that is, uh, uh, why aren't we inspired all the time? What's, ta what's taking it away? And I think that's a real good question. And uh, I don't really have a complete ans answer to it. But I th I've noticed that our, the system we live in and our regular routines um, don't keep us inspired. So when we have that word, oh, that inspired me, I think like, well, why weren't you inspired to begin with? It was, was a matter, you know? And so I'm uh, thinking that, uh, 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 yeah, and the famous, the most famous example uh, is that anything can, anything can inspire you, get, get your spirit back, is um, to hold a, a grain of sand in your hand, you know, the William Blake's, uh, Poem like even a grain of sand, and you, it's like holding the world in your hand and see the world in a grain of sand. So that anything can inspire us, and uh, and should, and and even uh, the a skunk <laughs> it was just outside. <laughs> Did you see that, Michael? They go to your house. No. <laughs> and it, uh, by the I know that's sprayed by. I guess what the. I made a list of songs to play for tonight, and maybe each time when we get to each of the songs, I'll say why I picked it originally as something that I, I conceived of as inspiring. And and if each of you had to say, well, what inspires you? Everybody has something, you know, and it's uh, and it, you know, it can be a grain of sand, or it could be a really a, your a loved one, or, and any you know, it really depending how poetic we are, you know, I think. So the first song we're going to play is called Always Merry and Bright. And uh, for uh, anybody that knows the writing of uh, Henry Miller, that was he. Uh, that was his motto. He liked to make that his motto. That uh, whatever uh, things he was going through in his life, not having a house or living on the street or whatever he was doing that was difficult and trying, he liked to stay always merry and bright. Even uh, the coming of World War II didn't daunt that, amazingly enough. And uh, so it's, uh, this song uh, was inspired by uh, Henry, I was reading a lot of Henry Miller at the end, and I came across that motto and I, this, this song came out of that. Thank you for <laughs> listening to my monologue. <laughs> that. Are you ready? It looks like you are. Well,
Mary too. <laughs> uh, uh, everybody, or anybody know uh, who Minnie Ripperton is? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and, and the title of this song is Minnie Ripperton was a soul singer, and Minnie Ripperton was a soul singer. She was famous for uh, having an amazing uh, well, vocal release. She could hit these higher notes than anybody else could do. And uh, so I don't know. What, so what's inspiring about her was uh, that she could do that, but also there's just, I, I just uh, I don't know what it was about her that uh, attracted me. It's somebody that circumstances in her life did not go favorably for her, but she really uh, kept the soulful spirit uh, right along. And if you try to find out who Minnie Ripperton is and start listening to her records and her uh, albums, a lot of them, a lot of them weren't that great. I think she was given material to sing that really wasn't that good. And she just did her best always to make it have punch and power. And some of the songs, so this song is dedicated to Minnie Ripperton. Minnie Ripperton, Minnie Ripperton was a soul singer.
Yeah, everybody should check it. What, uh, what's her what's her famous song? It has that same la 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 la. la. That's the same lyric. Uh, same has a lyric that has that same. Can't remember the famous song. Can't remember. But check, check out many of her pictures. Voice, right? It's what? High squeaky voice, right? Well, she had a real nice voice, but she could get into the higher higher register. She could hit notes that only dogs could. Make. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> she was famous for that, but her regular voice was was Mel. Loving you. Loving you. Here, here you go. Thank you. Why is the next song? Another inspiration uh, we were just talking about Gilgamesh is um, the song of the song of Shemot, and Shemot is a temple love priestess that uh, seduces uh, Enkidu, the friend of Gilgamesh, in the beginning of that story, and it's uh, she launches the whole story, and it, it's an amazing character. And it's uh, if you ever read the story, read the story of Gilgamesh again, uh, think about Shemot. And I was thinking uh, this song was dedicated to her. She's glossed over, and she's uh, she only appears in part of the story. But I think uh, none of it. Uh, uh, where's Roger? I was just talking to him about about that. Uh, is it really, uh, you know, what's her role in that book? And uh, everybody should check that out. <laughs> this is a, and the, the song. A lot of these songs are uh, for the purpose of. Uh, Myself, for a songwriter, and or somebody that paints pictures or something, or writes a story, it, it's to galvanize your own attention, and sort of thinking about uh, about that character, thinking about what the song's all all about. So that for me, that was uh, what it was. And then the time you have uh, the benefit of uh, we exist in in time and in a moment, and and space and in a moment. We don't have much space we occupy, but we occupy a lot of time. We can go back really far individually. I can remember when I wrote that song, and I can think a way about Shamat who was you know, thousands of years ago. So it's like a little time travel while we're playing. <laughs> Thank you. See, I, I can't remember what I had for lunch today. So that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where it gets complicated. That is. <laughs> One, two, three.
Peter saved the ending. It was nice. So <laughs> yeah. it's Brought it back to spirit. Good. Yeah. 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 Next song and moving along in the list is uh, dedicated to uh, Duke Ellington. Not, maybe not everybody's heard of Minnie Ruperton or Shamrock. <laughs> Duke Ellington is well known. And this one, I, I was looking over, I was trying to, I knew the song had something to do with being inspired by Duke Ellington, but uh, I didn't know what to call it. And then I was listening to this uh, French classical music and uh, Maurice Ravel dedicates pieces, Some he, he says, in the manner of uh, a la manière de Chabrier, or a la manière de, uh, is, another, uh, is another one of the early composers that he, that he really, Couperin. And, uh, so this one is a la manière de Ellington. <laughs> <laughs>
got to change a pace from that. Uh, another person that I wonder if anybody has heard of Duke Pearson. This, this song is called Duke's, Duke's Place, but it's not Duke Ellington. It's Duke Pearson. And Duke Pearson is a piano player that uh, inspired me because he played in a simple manner, but uh, always stayed in a great groove. It was, wasn't full of technical uh, wizardry, but he just uh, he kept great time and had a good feel all the time. I don't know if he's still alive, but he, he made a lot of records. And, and we're going to play this song dedicated to Duke Pearson called Duke's Place. And I'd like to feature uh, Tim Gilmore on this <laughs> tune. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just featured uh, Peter Concilia. That was really nice bass uh, stuff on that song. Thank you. Uh, 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 he sounds good. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he pays me. Uh, all right.
was Duke's yeah. last name? Duke's last name? Duke Pearson. Pearson. Mm. And, uh, I think he's dead. And we ought to acknowledge uh, Billy Higgins, his uh, style of drumming that was hearing a little bit of. And, and uh, one more song to set. And it's, uh, I think, no, maybe two more. Uh, Martin Fierro. And Martin Fierro was a gaucho, a cowboy, and it, uh, the uh, Martin Fierro epic uh, is it's called the uh, it's the ep epic of Argentina, and it, somebody came in a bookstore once and uh, said, "Do I have it? Do I have Mar Martin Fierro?" And I said, "I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know anything about it." And, and the person was from Argentina, and she told me about it. And it was so enthusiastic that uh, I wound up checking it out, and it's uh, it's great. It's a great story. It was and it was written by a guy named Jose Hernandez. And it's uh, the hero, uh, Borges, uh, wrote a, 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 a study of it. Uh, he called the Martin Fiera. And it's, uh, so he liked it a whole lot too. So it's, um, it's, it's a hip story and, and everybody ought to read it. And at the time it was written, it was, uh, people picked up on it right away and memorized parts of it and would meet each other in the street and would say parts of the story. So that's a successful author. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's, the story still holds up. Martin Fierro is not a great hero, but the story is full of uh, uh, wonderful descriptions of the, it's like the, the Wild West in America, maybe 100 years later or 50 years later. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, 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 anyway, the song inspired me and the character inspired me. They do, and uh, the Martin Fierro is a guitar player. And then one of the things they do in this, in the Martin Fierro story is they have uh, battles. Who can play the, do you know the story? Who can play the best and uh, who can tell the best story? Yeah. So we know that tradition too. <laughs> so it's all, uh, anyway, it's all, the, the thing is about inspiration tonight. That gives me a chance to talk about all my heroes and what uh, got me started on these songs. Get into the music, and that, none of that matters.
I just said we're going to stay in South America for this last uh, title. Uh, this one's dedicated to Simon Bolivar. Probably some of you have heard the song uh, Bolivar was played here before at other times. Um, but uh, Simon Bolivar remains an inspiration not only to me, but hopefully to um, lots of others. And uh, you hear all about this Bolivar, uh, Bolivar, Bolivar variant, uh, Republic, uh, and the Bolivarian, Bolivar variant revolution. And it's uh, something that we all ought to tune into and hope for. It, and basically, it refers to um, the, the people who live in a country ought to control their own resources and not have it uh, be, uh, not have a foreign country. Uh, in this case of Simon Bolivar, who was born and lived around the time of George Washington and Napoleon, uh, he wanted to get the Spanish out of South America. And uh, he wanted that very badly. He was born uh, in Venezuela to a wealthy family, uh, but he sympathized uh, heartily with the regular, uh, the have-nots, and wanted to get the, the, Sp uh, the Spanish uh, colonists out. And he spent a lot of his life. Uh, he went, and maybe if I said before, he's gone as he went as further than uh, um, Hannibal went, or he went as far as far as probably went about as far as Marco Polo went, uh, on mostly on horseback from one end of South America to the other, and, and time after time. But it didn't work out happily for him in his lifetime. And he said it was like uh, at the end of his life, he said his his ex his efforts have been like plowing the sea. Uh, but it's not. Uh, we're still inspired by uh, his idea, and that we hope, we hope that uh, and and uh, aspire for having that happen to uh, to have uh, uh, remember uh, the idea. Yeah. So <laughs> that song gives me a chance to talk about that and think about that, and uh, that makes me happy and gives us a uh, call.
I'm going to we'll take a break. And uh, we're going to continue. Thank you, everybody, for <laughs> hanging in. Just, uh, not going to <laughs> Stay around to listen to the second set, which uh, will be different than the first set. And we're uh, going to play any of the same songs again, telling the same stories over. But if we're going to start off with uh, uh, the, returning to the theme of inspiration. And one of the people that uh, know me know that I really uh, have learned a lot and, and, and been from uh, Noam Chomsky. And he's, uh, he's, he's a hero of a lot of people or an inspiration to a lot of people. And uh, I've learned a ton from him. So I wrote a song a bunch of years ago. The, the, he's a complex person and complicated uh, intellect and does a lot of different things. So this song is, it has reflects that and it has some complexities involved too. And I bet he would just laugh a lot to hear it. He's, he's, Noam Chomsky is 94 and if you haven't heard him lately, he's fantastic. And, and uh, listen to him about uh, what's going on in Israel and Palestine. It's really go on YouTube and put Chomsky Palestine and, and He's so articulate and, and terrific. And it's, uh, it's a wonderful example of uh, humans at 94 being able to think clearly. <laughs> Other than, I mean, if he said it when he was 19, it still would have been really true and wonderful. It's just great in addition, you know.
Wait for David. Chomsky. And then of them. Slowing down with this one. And this one probably doesn't really need much explanation. It's called I Remember Train. Oh, yeah. I'm crying. And I guess the only thing possibly to say about it is uh, well, John Coltrane's, uh, maybe one of his most famous songs was uh, Giant Steps. And this song that, uh, that I wrote in 1983 has uh, the same uh, harmonic structure as that, as that song.
play in there. But, uh, next tune is a more personal one uh, uh, dedicated to somebody nobody knows uh, except me. Uh, a guy I met when I was about 19 or 18 who uh, had a big influence on my life. And uh, so I threw, made up a song for him years later just trying to think about him. So, uh, just, I was thinking, what could it say about somebody? And I haven't seen him since I was you know, 19, but I remember him really well. And I remember him telling me uh, one time uh, about his character. And he was saying that uh, he was like, uh, you know, the uh, you know the movie The Fugitive Kind with Marlon Brando? Mm -hmm. and, and it was a, uh, there was a play that Tennessee Williams wrote called Orpheus Descending. And, and uh, and its movie got made with featuring Marlon Brando, with uh, as the uh, lead lead guy. And uh, so my friend Richard said that that was him, and he said it was uh, uh, it was a character. He in the character in the story uh, relates a story that uh, about a bird that doesn't have any legs and uh, that uh, just flew. And he said that was like him, and he always went flew from one place to another and never uh, settling down. So that was kind of the image of the Tennessee Williams he used in. And this guy just identified thoroughly, and I, and I, I was, uh, I'd never encountered that in a, in, at that point in my life. I'd never seen anybody that, uh, was this real, uh, real blues feeling, this guy. So later on I wrote the song thinking about Richard Miller. If you ever hear through the Woodstock Community TV, that way you'll just laugh your head off hearing that story. <laughs> <laughs> So this is one for Richard, and this song has an unusual uh, thing. You might as well say this too: that uh, it's got uh, it has a, a bossa feeling, and it's got a swing feeling, and it's got a ballad section, and it's uh, uh, and we keep that right throughout the whole thing, and, and it's a unique kind of a, a thing that somehow I think I hope works. Okay, well, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
nature. And, uh, continuing inspirational theme, this, this guy is, uh, this is a sad reflection. This is uh, dedicated to uh, Iqbal Ahmed, who uh, is not, uh, it's not as famous as he should be. And he's uh, somebody that's uh, a wonderful human, born in Pakistan, who uh, taught at Hampshire College for a brief time. And uh, he's a, he, he wrote a daily column for a, a Pakistani uh, newspaper, but he didn't write any whole books, but he did a lot of public speaking. And he had, a, a, like Chomsky, he was aware of what was going on all over the world and had humanitarian uh, perspective. As a boy, he uh, toured with uh, Gandhi, like as like 12 year old or something like that. He went around India and he had met uh, Tagore, and, and he, so he had, all, he had all this wonderful background, and as, uh, uh, was able to, for, for me, what inspired me about this character was that he made, um, he gave uh, politics uh, a moral dimension uh, mm. that I didn't really uh, understand clearly, and probably if I've talked about him to different friends, he always uh, think he knew what was going on in every part of the world, just like, say, how's your cousin, and you tell me how he was doing. So he knew what, what, what was going on in East Timor or what was going on in New Zealand or Australia. And it, he just, uh, it wasn't that he memorized everything. He just, uh, he just cared about it. So and that's what it was uh, inspiring. So this song is called Ekbal.
Right. Yeah. <laughs> Need a break. That was uh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> We've we got a couple more left. I, I'm going to play uh, a song called Chris's Modal Tones, which is our most uh, open piece of the night. We don't have uh, a whole lot of prearranged things. It's a brief song. And uh, Chris, uh, from Chris's Modal Tones, is still a, this song was written in around when I was about in my young 20s. And he, um, he's still a good friend, and it's, uh, which is a great thing. And he, Chris was a little bit ahead of me and uh, musically and played saxophone at the time and was connected to hip players and uh, alerted me to what was going on that I wasn't aware of. And, uh, and he still does that. <laughs> Which is really great. He's so, helped. You know, hear this thing at Small. So it was just recorded the other day. And this tenor player. And, and uh, so it's it's great to have friends like that. And uh, so the, and, and but he was a little uh, Chris. If, if he ever listens to this, he was. Uh, you'd often see uh, he had to re uh, rehearse the same themes, like in conversation. So that, that uh, you know what I mean. And so that would. Uh, that's the idea of the modal tones, like you're saying the same kinds of things a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right, ready for this? Okay. One, two, one, two, three.
<laughs> well, so I'm starting to use the say. <laughs> yeah, well, we got one, one more tune to watch. That could have been a good go and help tune, but we have one more. It's a very new song for a, a new grandchild. That, uh, so the song is named after the grandchild that's four months old now. It's, it's called Asa Abbey.
and I listen to all these songs, <laughs> personal <laughs> stories. Uh, uh, <laughs> feel a little uh, uh, embarrassed for telling all my uh, all my past. Everybody's got all the same sorts of stuff, though. And thank you for uh, Tim Gilmore and Peter Consolio. For So thank you, and uh, and thank you for uh, Jared from the Woodstock Community TV, which is greatly appreciated. Uh, I've been uh, listening and watching these things, amazingly enough, and uh, I'm I'm very appreciative uh, that this we get a chance to uh, view and see how we did. Yeah, they can learn a lot from these performers. And I've been my friends in different parts of the world. Are, uh, I've said thank you, so I'm really glad to. Uh, be able to share the music outside of uh, this room. But this room was enough. <laughs> Everybody is terrific. Everybody that's here, I, I want to clap for them. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.